The Kansas City Chiefs are your back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions. The Cleveland Browns, as much as they have to gauge themselves versus the AFC North, they have to gauge themselves against the Kansas City Chiefs. That is the bar of the NFL right now. We will talk about all that and more. Your latest Locked On Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Jeff Lloyd, and I appreciate all of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. If you are not part of the everyday crowd by now, make sure you change that and subscribe to the Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl and use code all lowercase locked on nfl for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars uh we'll start here um obviously out for a couple of days and look there's been some episodes missed over you know last month five weeks um my wife dealing with some medical issues um we finally think we've gotten to the root of it um I had some surgery on Monday. She's doing fantastic. Um, been a scary time, obviously. Um, but uh, that kind of explains the absence. Um, you know, appreciate everybody for the understanding. Um, I love the show. I love doing this show. Absolute passion of mine. Um, but after 19 plus years, uh, my beautiful bride, she certainly needed to take front stage. And we got everything we can take care of for her. But we are back and we are full throttle. Um, certainly appreciate everybody for their understanding. And for those who did know, certainly appreciate you all for your support. Kansas City Chiefs. And I will say that was probably one of the best Super Bowls I've ever seen. Um, I know people are going to get in, uh, you know, like, I don't want to say penalty flag in, in the Super Bowl. So people going back, running through, oh, this could have been a penalty. That could have been, get the heck out of here. It's the Super Bowl, man. Just let the guys play ball. End of story, end of discussion on that. Um, obviously, you know, the, the craziness, the quirkiness of, you know, the overtime rules, you know, did the Chiefs truly know? Did the Chiefs truly prepare? Was San Francisco maybe a little a bit negligent in that regard? Um, and look, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking, you know, the 49ers. And obviously speaking on it afterwards is certainly a poor look. Um, you know, whether you knew or not, the last thing you want to know is, you know, basically let anybody know that your slip was showing and maybe you weren't prepared or you didn't know. That stuff that should never get out of in-house and kind of just foolish on that. Patrick Mahomes, uh, whatever your quarterback Mount Rushmore is, if Patrick Mahomes is not on it by now, you're just kidding yourself. Even at 28 years old, we are talking about one of the greatest quarterbacks that has ever ever played in this league the fact that he has got probably minimum another decade to go just what this young man is capable of continuing doing with his career just an absolute amazing amazing player the thing about Mahomes is obviously when he came out of Texas Tech you know everybody saw you know the splash the the stuff that you cannot teach you know, the stuff that just, you know, God given ability, you know, the arm, the rolling to the left. I mean, just all, the rolling to the left, 50 yard dime, just the overall craziness that he had within his game. And then just wondering, well, can he be simplified? Can he do the simple things? And it has been amazing to see how he's picked up the simplicity and not had to rely. And you've seen this since his beginning days in the league, obviously so many wow plays um, to where he is now taking what the defense gives him, understanding his legs are a great part of his success. Uh, obviously, you know, the fourth and one in overtime where he got the first down, obviously a couple of runs, big, big, you know, getting Kelsey involved in the second half, big play to Rasheed Rice. Um, you know, of course, then obviously, you know, McCole Hardman, you know, was a free agent last year, a player I clamored for, big 52-yard reception, the game-winning touchdown reception within that game. The Chiefs are the standard right now in the NFL, and this is what the Cleveland Browns are looking at. This is what the Cleveland Browns 
need to be. Look, you want to gauge yourself certainly against the AFC North, but if you are going to ultimately play in a Super Bowl, you have to get yourself to a game against Kansas City Chiefs and on the other side of a game of playing the Kansas City Chiefs. Things where I think the Browns stack up pretty well versus the Kansas City Chiefs defensively. No question. And I think that is probably something here with this year's Chiefs team. Um, and it did get recognized. Maybe it did not get recognized enough. It's just how well the defense is, just how well the defense plays collectively. Steve Spagnuolo rewarded, obviously, after this Super Bowl title uh, with a new contract extension. Just, you know, absolute gem. Um, a guy that is so intuitive and so in sync with what his players do and do well. Chris Jones, I know a lot of people, you know, again, the ones who want to just look at stat sheets, you're foolish. Chris Jones is one of the best overall defensive linemen in the entire NFL. His presence was felt as an outside pass rusher, as an inside pass rusher. Uh, their linebackers are good. They're fast to the ball. They're short tacklers. Uh, McDuffie was an incredible, an incredible uh, targeted 11 times, gave up three receptions. I think the yardage was very, very minimal. Obviously had the big pass breakup in the end zone, had a pass breakup on a blitz late in the game. And this is a you know, great, great showing from him. And I think the Browns probably are on par with that Chiefs defense. They truly are. Um, there's certainly going to be some additions and hopefully some upgrades made to the Cleveland Browns defense. So we're going to get to that in segment three as far as some more specifics as to what I think the Browns are probably going to be looking for for their defense. Offensively, you know, it, it, it's it's it, it's hopefully going to be what Deshaun Watson can do for you. You know, you look at San Francisco and look, for the most part, Brock Purdy played a pretty solid game. Good enough to win? Probably. Good enough to beat Patrick Mahomes? That's a whole different horse of a whole different color. So that's where the Browns and hopefully the dedication process of this offseason to improving the offensive coaching, coaching, to improving the offensive personnel, putting more depth to it, putting more teeth to it is going to be vital. The Browns hopefully are going to tack this 2024 offseason very much in the same fact that they handled the 2023 offseason on the defensive side of the ball, improving the coaching, improving the personnel, making it a focus not just to be good enough, but to be great. And the Browns defense was great in 2023. Browns offense needs to be great in 2024. And there's several avenues they can go to. We're going to break that all down. We're going to continue on here. You're late on locked up, latest locked on Browns. I've missed you all. I appreciate you all for sticking along for the ride. Don't anybody go anywhere. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. We are the easiest, most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection, and you can watch your winnings roll in. It's demon time on Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. You want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz. You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Kick prize picks community each week now if you put together a nice lineup if you had maybe mahomes if you had maybe kelsey if you had the passing and the rushing of christian mccaffrey those probably put at you way on the way to winning a lot of money from super bowl sunday go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl use code locked on nfl for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars again prizepicks.com promo code locked on NFL your first deposit will be matched up to $100 your latest locked on browns continues i am back i've missed you all your host chef floyd i appreciate you all for making locked on browns your first listen every single day if you're not part of the everyday crowd by now, make a new plan, stand, subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. Of course, Locked On Browns is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Now, talking here about the Browns trying to make this jump to the level, to reaching that bar that the Kansas City Chiefs have set, you have to look at this Browns offensive side of the ball. And one of the things 
you know, where the Browns might be different from the Chiefs. And I still remember a couple of years ago when the Browns moved on from Tyreek Hill. And for me, it was a head scratcher at the time. You know, it's, you know, look, Tyreek Hill is such a unique type of player. And, you know, look, money gets tight for everybody. And obviously what the Chiefs ultimately felt is what Tyreek Hill was worth was something that they were not comfortable with paying. You could piecemeal it and find a fine, you know, two, three players to do different variations of what Tyreek Hill did. I admit it. I thought the Chiefs were kind of foolish at the time. Well, joke's on me, obviously. <laughs> two Super Bowl titles after that. Um, now, you know, a lot has been spoken about the last couple of days. The Kansas City Chiefs do not have to be a team that has to pay wide receivers. Patrick Mahomes levels that playing field between a great wide receiver and a good wide receiver to get the good closer to great. Rasheed Rice is going to be a really, really solid player. But when you get to play with the game's best, obviously your game gets elevated. It's up to the player to be able to elevate to the quarterback. Rice does that. Scantling, MVS, he is a player that is able to be a little bit better than he always has been playing with a player like Patrick Mahomes. McCole Hardman. Obviously, out there last year, the Chiefs, again, letting a player test the market, saying, look, if you're worth more to someone else, we understand it. We don't want to hold you back. Everybody is due their just desserts. Hardman, a player that I lobbied for the Browns to sign, obviously that did not come to fruition, goes to the New York Jets. And who knows? Maybe things would have changed for a player like McCole Hardman if Aaron Rodgers, 2023 season, was shorter than 20 seconds. Maybe Hardman becomes a factor there. Gets lost in the shuffle. Ultimately gets released. Smart player in that situation. Goes back to where you've had your greatest success. He goes back to Kansas City. He goes back to Patrick Mahomes. He goes back to Andy Reid. And it wasn't really like he was just plugged in right away. And it's not like he's been a big success part of what was the 2023 Kansas City Chiefs season. But when the opportunity arise, arose, he stepped up and made some huge, huge plays for the Chiefs, obviously in the Super Bowl, cultivating in the game-winning touchdown pass. I bring this up because this is maybe where the Browns are a little bit different. The Browns have tried this now for four seasons under the Kevin Stefanski-Andrew Barry regime, trying to bring in mid-tier wide receivers and hoping that they could hit on any of them. To be honest, whether it was draft, whether it was free agency, the only wide receivers the Browns have truly supremely hit on it was a good hit on Donovan Peoples-Jones, keeping in mind from the fact that Donovan Peoples-Jones was the sixth-round pick who went to starter. The Amari Cooper trade has obviously been nothing, nothing but a straight windfall for this Cleveland Browns franchise. So now the Browns have to look to improve this room. And the Browns can't rely and hope that Deshaun Watson elevates. We have no proof. We have not seen that yet. So until we do see that, you've got to try to attack it and get top sheer, top tier talent within that room. My OBAR guys keep telling me, watch Mike Williams, watch Mike Williams for the Los Angeles Chargers. I wasn't a fan of Mike Williams when he was going through free agency a couple seasons ago. Let's see if that is something that does come to fruition. The Browns, May not be able to bag a big name free agent. You know, T. Higgins obviously tagged. I don't know if T. Higgins is going to be a bangle. I honestly think he's not. But I mean, for the Bengals, that is the best way to get the recoup uh, of what you're going to lose in T. Higgins is to put that tag on him, trade him. I'm sure T. Higgins agent David Mulligettas want to get the biggest return possible, just as he did last offseason with Jesse Bates. So that's certainly something to monitor. You have the Pittman out there. You certainly have Gabe Davis out there, which I think would be a perfect hand to glove fit for this Cleveland Browns offense. You saw how much better this Cleveland Browns offense was when they finally were able to get some vertical consistency in their passing game. That is basically the number one strength of a player like Gabe Davis's game. Ken Dorsey is here. Ken knows Gabe. Gabe is comfortable with Ken. Uh, with Ken. Deshaun is going to need this because the Browns don't want to go back. They don't want to have to put Deshaun Watson in a position where he's got to go 14 for 14 and play perfect football in a second half to win a game on the road. Chunk plays can clean up and can make up for clunkiness, some you know incompletion, some having to throw the ball away. 
that is where chunk plays, big plays, 30, 40, 50 yard plays can make a difference. The Amari Cooper touchdown against the Chicago Bears. How much of a difference did that play make? Not only in that Sunday for the Cleveland Browns, but for the closing out of the regular season for the Cleveland Browns, which obviously led them to be the number one seed in the wild card. You have to look at this running back room and look, Isaiah Pacheco is a really nice running back, a strong, fierce running back runs with conviction. It's not a superb athlete, does not break a lot of long runs. Um, you look at Nick Chubb, you don't know, none of us know. I mean, we have no idea what exactly Nick Chubb is bringing to this team next year. Could it be a hundred touches? Could it be 200 touches? There is no answer. There is no clear-cut answer right now. And I don't even know when we're going to come close to having a clear-cut attempt at a guess to what Nick Chubb can bring to this team next year. Jerome Ford, there were times where he really looked the part. There were times where offensive line inadequacies, and I, you know, as the everydayers know, I talked about this a ton. I think there were times where Jerome Ford was being fed information from basically two different standpoints. One of just what you can get, get whatever you can get. Or I also think there was be patient, let the guys set it up. So I think for Jerome Ford, it was a productive year. I think it was a confusing year for Jerome Ford. I think he was in a tough spot as there were times. I think he was being fed information in one year, being fed different information to another year. And what are you supposed to do? You're the second year running back. You're trying to fill in for a franchise icon, the best running back in the NFL. It's a really, really tough spot. And I think Jerome performed admirably. I think Jerome's abilities to assist in the receiving game, it's going to put for a nice spot for Jerome Ford to be in next year. But you look at a running back like David Singletary, you look at a running back like Avery Moss. Both these guys have experience with Ken Dorsey. Both these guys can contribute as receivers, can contribute as runners. These are names. And again, I don't know if Singletary is going to get out of Houston. Moss may very well get in Indianapolis and also for Moss. He has a went through this last year with the Colts with Jonathan Taylor missing so much time. He was basically RB number one. Then Taylor came back. Then Taylor missed a month with the injury. So he would be very familiar and comfortable with coming in here and saying, you know, I may be the guy three weeks, four weeks, but he and Jerome Ford could be a nice pairing while they amp up Nick Chug. Chubb, get Nick Chubb ready. And again, we have no idea when Nick Chubb takes the football field. September, October, November, December. None of us have any idea. Do we all want number 24 back? Absolutely. Do any of us know when that comes? 110% no. We're going to continue on here. We're going to talk a little bit about the Cleveland Browns defense. Your latest Locked On Browns continues. Your host, Jeff Lloyd. Nobody go anywhere. What a football game it was, but as usual, the commercials stole the show in my book. DoorDash went all out for game day and DoorDash stuff from all the ads to one lucky winner, cars, snacks, even tax, software. DoorDash is the all-in-one app for your everyday needs from restaurants and groceries to flowers and gifts. So next time you're running low on dinner ideas, pet supplies, or just time, you can get so much more than you realize delivered through DoorDash. Whatever watch party or anything party you've got coming up, get it delivered with DoorDash. Football season may be over. We're all sad, but we're in the thick of basketball games the school year, and let's face it, winter. I can think of a million reasons daily to order DoorDash. Hop on the app, make your day a little easier. Get dinner for tonight, groceries for the week, or a consolation prize for your sad friends in losing the Super Bowl. Sorry, folks in San Francisco, all on DoorDash. DoorDash, your door to more. Head to the DoorDash app to get everything you need delivered. Your latest Lockdown Browns continues. Your host, Jeff Lloyd. I appreciate each and every one of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. The everyday crowd you don't want in, you need in. So subscribe to the Locked On Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. My everyday crowd knows that Locked On Browns in its infancy and as the years have gone on, nobody, and I mean nobody, in Cleveland Browns podcasting 
crushes the offseason and gives you the dedication to free agency trades and the draft like this show does we are going to bring in a million guests this offseason and you guys better make sure you subscribe now so you are here for each and every minute of it now i mentioned now with the browns trying to put themselves on the bar of the kansas city chiefs the one advantage the browns do have is the defensive side of the ball yes some movement some activity is going to be done to the personnel on that side of the defense. Does a player like Zadarius Smith come back? In my opinion, Zadarius was good, was not great. Now, the question you have, was it just a transitional year for Zadarius Smith? Or is he starting to hit that point where maybe he's more of a role player than an every down player? Question certainly would be price tag. Question would be his worth in the Cleveland Browns brass eyes as opposed to possibly his worth for another team, another franchise. What's he going to want financially? Because bringing Zedarius Smith back brings up two other questions. How much is Agbanaya Ankaronkwo on the field? And how much is going to be third-year defensive end Alex Wright, who had a very, very special season? You saw the growth you saw that uh, Alex Wright finding himself within himself, what type of player he can be, the contributions he can give you from the inside, the contributions he can give you from the outside, had a run of three of uh, sack streak three games in a row. That was really nice development from Alex Wright. So I'm all for the Browns bringing in another pass rusher. The way the draft board works, the Browns are going to have bigger needs with their first pick and most likely their second pick, 54, 87, I forget now. They're going to have bigger needs there. So after that, you know, you're going to be talking day three. And look, there might be players the Browns like, but really day three and with the Browns still having Isaiah McGuire, and hopefully the thought process is this will be a strong offseason for Isaiah McGuire. This will be where he can find his way into regular reps in 2024. Browns will be in the market. For a fourth the end. My question is, and my belief is, it needs to be a proven commodity. This could be a trade candidate. This could be, you know, a, this could be something where they move a player. And I hate to say it, but a player like Greg Newsom, as much as I love Greg and as great as Greg has been for his three years here, Greg Newsom might be somebody that could be better off moving on. There are several teams in the NFL where Greg Newsom would be a plug and play day one cornerback for them starting. You know, Greg has to play on the outside. Greg has to play some slot, some nickel, and he's been very good at it. And other than some social media nonsense that, that whether it existed or not, we don't even know how true that truly is. Greg's been a, you know, a vulnerable, valuable player for this team. But it comes now to is Greg's worth, you know, to bring in somebody else to play somewhere else, ultimately giving Greg the path to get where Greg wants to be. Obviously that second year contract. I mean, I'm sorry, that second contract where he gets to a team that brings him in and says, right away, we are picking up that fifth year option right away. You are going to play for us and you are going to start for us. Tough thing. Martin Emerson just probably fits the defense, the scheme better. He's the biggest, longest, most physical corner they have. Cam uh, Cam Mitchell, obviously, at times, played very well for this team. The Browns are always active in drafting corners, so they have drafted one every year, so it's hard to believe they will not draft one again. Remember Halassi that they uh, brought in last year uh, at the waiver deadline, maybe a player they would like to get more looks at. So is there a move for Greg Newsom for a veteran-proven defensive end? And maybe it doesn't have to be a starter. Maybe it could be a rotational player, but somebody with a proven track record of getting anywhere from five to eight sacks per season. The linebacker room, look, I'm okay with bringing back Sione Takitaki because I think he and JOK work well in unison together. Anthony Walker, 
who knows at this point? And obviously for Anthony, it's been a lot, a lot of injuries in his time here with the Browns. And do you go younger here? Do you want to get Tony Fields on the ball uh, on the field a little bit more? Do you want to get Diabate on the field a little bit more? These are all things to gain and gauge. Obviously, the safety room. You'll certainly have Thornhill. Delpit is certainly locked up. You got Ronnie Hickman. Are you going to go late for one more veteran safety like they did last year? But the Browns, the defense should be the easier part. You know, it's tweaking, it's subbing out a couple of guys, bringing in a couple of guys, but the core of the Cleveland Browns defense should still be here for 2024. You certainly got your head man in Jim Schwartz, who had such a productive 2023 season. Browns defense should be back, should be even better in 2024. But the key for the Browns is getting this offense to take some leaps here. And look, part of it is unknown. And again, we don't truly know what Deshaun Watson can do in a 17-game season for the Browns. It's not fair. We have nothing to go on. I think Deshaun's got all the talent in the world, but we got to get him on the field and he's got to be on the field for a consistent basis. And then with the talent that the Browns are going to bring in, because they are going to bring in a lot of talent to make sure this Deshaun Watson things work. Will that be what gets them even Steven and hopefully to an AFC championship game, hopefully even more in Cleveland against the Kansas City Chiefs. I am your host, Jeff Lloyd. As you all know, we're going from season seven to almost season eight here with Locked On Browns and your Cleveland Browns coverage. I appreciate you all for making me your first listen every single day. If you're not part of the everyday crowd by now, get on the bus, go subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the yellow B. Let's go Browns.